While I was recently working on a project to make DIY microfluidic devices, I realized that I needed to make and upgrade some of my tools in the lab. So, in this video I will be showing you how I turned this old, extremely cheap educational microscope into a DIY upgradable, potentially numerically controllable microscope with a 2K resolution digital camera feed to my PC. Now, it's worth asking whether it's really necessary or beneficial to try to upgrade it. After all, already for many decades even the cheap educational microscopes are more or less capable of magnifying down to close to the optical limit of about the 1000x. In my case though, the problem was the sample stage. It was infuriatingly bad. The Z-axis control only had coarse adjustment with a travel height of only about 2 cm. But worst of all, there was absolutely no X or Y axis control. There was also no condenser iris included and while there was a camera module, the sensor had a terrible 240p resolution and the image quality was, in general, shocking. And not in a good way. At least the microscope had three objectives on a carousel and a proper condenser lens, though, as we'll see soon enough, these objectives are also pretty terrible. So, having decided that instead of spending a few hundred euros on a new trinocular microscope, I'd simply use the random junk I have laying about and some 3D printing to upgrade the microscope I already have. I started by opening up an old DVD drive in order to expose a few components I wanted to scavenge. The reed head stepper motor, the guide rails, as well as the carriage. I continued disassembling the drive until I was finally able to extract the whole module with all the parts I wanted. I then did exactly the same to a second old DVD drive. Before continuing, I ordered some easy driver stepper motor drivers as they allow one to use extremely low current to control the scavenged stepper motors. I then also quickly tested that the drivers and motors actually work and I was glad to see that both of the scavenged motors worked perfectly. In addition, I tested the NEMA 17 stepper motor I had laying about and wanted to use for the Z-axis. It worked just fine as well. Next, it was time to disassemble the microscope. I started with the light fixture and condenser lens, both of which I stored for later use. I then took off the stage and disconnected the body from the base, exposing the Z-axis mechanism. This mechanism, while fairly nice for getting precise movement in a simple package, is rather limited in its travel movement, which was one of the main problems I had with the microscope. So I continued and took apart the whole mechanism. At this point, I went on to design how the microscope should look like, work, and what parts needed to be 3D printed. And then, well, I 3D printed the parts. I also designed in the use of some heat set inserts for tighter bonding between the parts, as rigidity is quite crucial for a good functioning stepper stage. Speaking of function, I then wrote some code for an Arduino Nano to be able to actually control the different stepper motors. I spent maybe two or three hours on this code, so please don't look at it. It's ugly, but it is available on my GitHub. I then spent some time soldering up these pieces of horror. A control panel, microcontroller board with the Z-axis driver, and the X and Y axis drivers. At least this time, the device's schematic is rather simple. Earlier, I also alluded to adding a 2K digital camera, and for that purpose, I got myself this Raspberry Pi Cam 3, which I drive through a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi also serves to broadcast the image on the local network so that it would be possible to tune in from my PC. To do that, I first installed Raspbian on an SD card. I then made the systemd unit to run the command shown on the screen after booting. So now, as long as the microscope and my PC are on the same local network, I can run this command in a terminal on my PC and it will open up the video stream from the camera. 
At this point, I made some more pre-assembly preparations. I joined some parts. Filed away some excessive metal on the microscope body, as well as drilled and tapped some holes into the microscope body to hold on to some structural pieces. And finally, I also had to cut the lead screw I had to size as well. At this point, I figured I'd test out how well the Z-axis would work. And, uh... Yeah, this is a problem. The Z-axis really did not work. See, I had hoped that the Z-axis guide rails were close enough to the lead screw so that any torque generated on the Z-axis carriage by the lead screw would not really be an issue. I was obviously wrong though. So I did what I should have done from the beginning and looked at my 3D printer to see how it's done properly. As you can see here, the lead screw and the guide rails are in line with the axis of highest torque. In addition, the lead screw is in between the guide rails. So, I transferred this design to my microscope's design, reprinted some stuff, and this time the design seemed to work just fine. Now, I was finally ready to start assembling the microscope. Once I had assembled the XY stage module, I decided to do a sort of integration test. And for some reason, the stepper motors had stopped working. The Z axis was working normally, but neither the X or Y axis would move when commanded to. First, I did verify that the controllers were still good, except that then suddenly out of nowhere, on another test, everything stopped working again. In the end, I figured it out and the solution was rather easy but annoying. See, these power connectors have three pins and at first two of them seem to be ground. Except that one of them is actually a normally closed switch. So when I plugged in the power connector, it actually disconnected one of the grounds. The fix was to just resolder the connector. And once I did that, all the steppers started working again. What didn't work out though, was the whole freaking stage. See how it jumps? Yeah, I'm just stupid and had designed the stage poorly. And so it was binding on itself. So, after redesigning, reprinting and reassembling the stage, there was nothing more left to do than to just finish assembling the whole microscope. Eventually, I was left with this super DIY looking microscope. 
I quickly did some testing and it was apparent that the axes needed lubrication, as was expected. So I used some high purity BTFE grease on every surface where sliding occurs, which helped a lot and now the whole stepper stage works great. Next, I of course immediately set up the microscope to view something, only to find that I could not see anything through the camera. I suspected that this would happen though, as the original camera had no lens on it. While I could have used the camera with a normal eyepiece, I did not like that solution, because it makes large portions of the image sensor useless. So instead, I removed the lens from the camera, exposing the image sensor underneath directly, to prevent any dust from getting onto the sensor, which would ruin parts of the image. I also installed a protective glass to the camera structure and then made sure to tightly close the camera compartment. Doing all of this did indeed do the trick. The microscope was now functional and I could make the first observations. Unfortunately, I immediately noticed a couple problems. Firstly, the edges of the image are somewhat radially blurred. That's due to the poor objective quality and there's nothing I can really do about it. However, there's also these colors in places where they should not be. This effect is called chromatic aberration and while the achromatic objectives I have are expected to produce this effect, it should not be quite as strong as it is. I speculated that one reason for it may be the way I am lighting the sample which for now consisted of shining a high power flashlight onto the sample from the side. So instead, I figured I'd try to make a proper epi illumination setup with a beam splitter. While I do have some beam splitters, they all appear to be either dichroic or filtered in some way, so not suitable for the microscope. Fortunately, just simple glass can be used as a high transmittance beam splitter, so that's what I used. To prevent as much scattered light from the transmitted light as possible, I used black 3.0 acrylic paint to cover any reflecting surfaces inside the beam splitter optical tray. But careful when using this paint though, it is electrically conductive as I learned. As the light source, I used some 2.7 volt Cobb LEDs that I scavenged from a broken lamp. Using a mini hot plate, I managed to solder four of them in series onto a prototyping board, which I could then power through a current limiting resistor from the 12 volt supply. I then assembled and installed the epi illumination assembly. And at this point, I'll let the results speak for themselves. Though there's still some contrast issues, I think the new lighting setup is heaps better. While looking at small things under the microscope is fun and all, oftentimes it's necessary to know the size of the thing you're looking at. So to figure out the scale of things, I set the microscope to the lowest magnification and set my digital calipers to 0.5 millimeters or 500 micrometers. This also allows me to extrapolate the scale for all other magnifications. And while it's not the most precise method to figure out the scale, it will do for now. I also ended up finding this feature on an IC, which easily allows me to determine the smallest feature this microscope can resolve. At the number 20, the width of the thin line was around 550 nanometers. 
And because number 12 seems to be the smallest continuously resolvable line width, then it would appear that the microscope can see things as small as about 320 nanometers. Which is okay. Just okay. While I will be using the microscope mainly for reflected light microscopy, by adding back the condenser lens, it's possible to also do transmitted light microscopy. Like with this onion example, or these microorganisms from some pond water. And my blood. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if it's not too much to ask, please do click that subscribe and like buttons if you haven't already. The algorithm thinks you'll like this video next. That's it for today, see you next time, bye!